Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to Football Therapy. With me, I was Jan, and I hope you lot are doing well. I really hope that. Welcome back to the channel, and welcome to another Chelsea News video where I'll be talking about two stories today. Big ones too. One will be talking about the match between Chelsea and Tottenham away in North London, Frank Lampard against Jose Mourinho, student versus master. Apparently the relationship isn't as good as it used to be, and how that's a massive game for both teams. Loads of narrative. Also, apparently, Florentino Perez of Real Madrid has accepted or is happy with the bid of 44.4 million pounds for their number 10 superstar attacking midfielder, Isco, and why that would be a massively good signing for Chelsea. Before I get into both these new stories today, please do subscribe to Football Therapy. If you've not yet done so and you are new to the channel, click the subscribe button and then click the little bell notifications icon, that helps. And if you want to help me out, please do like the video. Whoop whoop. So you know what, let's get straight into it. The Galactico transfer story of Isco. I've actually reported on this before on Football Therapy when the original story started to come out that Chelsea were interested, but more stuff has been going round the rack the last two days. So who is Isco? Isco is a attacking midfielder in his prime. He's 27 years old. He's Spanish. He is he's a real favourite of the Real Madrid fans. He's a great, great player, super talented. But the last couple of seasons, he hasn't been at his best or he's been slightly out of favour by a Real Madrid coach Zinedine Zidane. Zidane started him a couple of nights ago in the Clasico against Barcelona and he played quite well in that number 10 role behind Benzema and Bale. But generally, he was thought to be a huge, huge player for them, one of their best, the biggest stars going forward, but he has been a little bit out of favour under Zidane. Now, Isco is a superstar. Even though he hasn't got any goals or assists yet this season, he's played not that many minutes. And to be honest, that might come down to Real Madrid sort of failing as a collective at many times. He's still in his prime and we know he's very, very talented. In the 16-17 season in La Liga, Isco managed 18 league goal involvements. 18! Remember, he's not a striker. He's not like a winger like Mo Salah that gets on the end of every single chance a team creates. He's a generally attacking flair midfielder that plays in the number 10. So 18 goal involvements is pretty special. That season actually worked out to a goal involvement every 91 minutes, a contribution per game, which again, number 10, not striker, very, very good. Now, 44.4 million pounds would also be an excellent deal for Chelsea. Chelsea got what looks like a wicked deal out of um, Mateo Kovacic in the end. This is something I've said before, and I do maintain, that I actually think there's a good relationship between Real Madrid and Chelsea. Even if they were annoyed at them for courting Hazard for so long, they got a really good deal out of Hazard, they got a good deal in Mateo Kovacic, I think everyone was happy with those deals. Obviously, again, they probably wouldn't have been happy with Courtois the way he forced himself out, but they still got good money from him from Real Madrid considering he was a goalkeeper with 12 months left on his contract. So the relationship is there by all accounts, and also it does seem Real Madrid need to balance books. They spent so, so much in the summer, like a lot of money, and if Zidane, feels like he wants to go a different direction than Isco, then they'll cash in. Someone like Isco probably would have cost, in the 16-17 season, maybe just after Pogba was bought when the market went crazy, he would have been worth crazy money, especially early mid-20s at that age. But if Chelsea secure him 44 million, that would be superb business for the Blues, especially considering they've got the money to spend easily. And let me tell you why that's such a good deal. Chelsea coach Frank Lampard, his preferred formation is the 4-2-3-1. Now he has his prodigal son, Mason Mount, that plays in the number 10 role. He's really the only proper number 10 at the club other than Ross Barkley. Sure, people say Pulisic can play in there, but his best work is done on the flanks. People will also say Ruben Loftus-Cheek, but if you've watched football therapy before and you've watched me talk about him, you will know that in my opinion his best work comes from the left centre mid spot in a 4-3-3. That's, that's when he exploded so well under Maurizio Sarri, scoring six league goals in open play in a quarter of the time Paul Pogba did. And that was Paul Pogba's amazing season. Anyway, Ross Barkley isn't putting pressure on anyone at the moment. He's getting drunk in back of cabs eating kebabs at the moment so Frank Lampard doesn't fancy him and I would not be surprised if Ross Barkley leaves Chelsea Football Club. So Mason Mount, it's a lot of pressure for a 20 year old 
He's a really, really young kid. Sure, he's talented. Sure, he's proper chills. Signed a new contract. Been at the club since he was six. So dream come true. That stuff's really, really nice. But really, Chelsea need more options as a dedicated number 10. They need someone in that role who's a Galactico that can put pressure on Mount. Mount can come back, rotate. Remember, it's a meritocracy under Lampard. If anyone's not playing that great, they get dropped for an academy player. Or if an academy player is not playing great, they'll get dropped for an elite expensive signing. Enter Isco. Isco would be an amazing player to play in the hole in the number 10 behind, say, Tammy Abraham or whoever's playing as striker at the time. Flanked by, say, Willian Pulisic or Hudson Adoy, pick your three, and have people like Mateo Kovacic behind him and N'Golo Kante or Jorginho. He will have a relationship with Kovacic already, and I reckon they would combine superbly. Kovacic sort of in that left centre midfield role, driving upwards, combining with Isco, gives it to the striker or wingers, goals, goals, goals. But Chelsea do need another player in the number 10 role to really demonstrate quality and put pressure on the other players. Mount's great, he probably feels like he's the number one choice regardless because he knows there's no one else that can play that role the way he can. And to Isco, a Galactico, a legitimate Galactico, Mount's game has to come up. Just like when Frank Lampard used to talk about how when Chelsea signed people like Michael Ballack, he didn't see it as a bad thing. He just raised his game and got better and better and better. And he did get better and better and better. And if he truly does see a lot of himself in young Mason Mount, then to me, it seems like a superb deal all around. Again, it's just stuff that's been reported in Spanish newspapers lately, but if there's truth to it, it seems like an absolute snip and Chelsea should absolutely by Isco in January. Just gonna sip my coffee quick. Right, let's talk about the big London derby. Frank Lampard versus Jose Mourinho, student versus master, Chelsea versus Tottenham. I think, I actually spoke about this on Eunice, uh, his stream yesterday, I went on chat to him and Louis Benevente, we talked about this game a little bit. I think Frank Lampard has lost a bit of respect for Jose after him going to Tottenham. No one really critiqued him for going to Manchester United. I think he always wanted that job the most prestigious job in Premier League so you kind of get that but for him to go to Tottenham I feel like Frank Lampard is a proper Chelsea man he didn't like it now I'm not going to get into the details but apparently there are rumored stories that there is no love lost between Jose and Frank over the years ever since he shipped him out of his Chelsea side and onwards apparently there was like some animosity but I'm not going to gossip I just wanted to state that theory I think this is going to be a really edgy game Chelsea are <laughs> they've lost four out of their last five to teams they really should be beating. Tottenham, I think they've won four out of their last five or something. Since Jose have come in, they've been amazing. Or at least they've been good. Son's been amazing. He's gone up another gear. Lucas Moura has. Kane's been just as good. Deli Alli has basically gone super saiyan. He's turned into a player again who's actually a really good football player. The Jose honeymoon is in full effect. And not only that, not only has he got Spurs playing expressive, exciting, attacking football at times, scoring loads of great goals, He's also put the dark arts into them. And if you look at the way they played against Wolverhampton, they absolutely should not have won that game. They shouldn't have even got a draw. They should have lost. They did an absolute robbery of a win and they were rotating fouls on the Dharma Traore, like straight up yellow card fouls. Immediate Jose Mourinho dark arts. When you're watching Harry Kane do that, you're like, right, Jose has arrived. So it's kind of worrying. They will absolutely be the favourites in that game, especially if you look at both individuals' form. But really, as much as a lot of Chelsea fans and people around the world football believe in Frank Lampard's ability as a manager moving forwards, with Jose's new updated modern take on coaching and bringing in his new assistant coach from Ligue 1, which is actually really smart, it does seem like for the moment Mourinho is not finished and he will look to give Chelsea and Frank Lampard an absolute humbling at home in the Premier League. So me and the boys talked about this last night on the stream and Eunice said something that I'd actually been thinking about before, so I was pleased he brought it up. Chelsea employing a 3-4-3 or a 3-5-2 away at Tottenham. Mourinho won't expect this. Chelsea haven't done it for a while. Probably not since it went really bad in the Valencia game. Um, obviously, after Chelsea did so well playing Wolves away in the Premier League when they played a 3-4-3 and scored five goals away at Molyneux. Chelsea have been poor defensively and they need to be solid up away at Tottenham. And at Frank Lampard, obviously, he wants to play direct attacking football. But after losing so many games, maybe he'll come into this more cautiously and pragmatically. Chelsea should play a 3-5-2 or a 3-4-3, but if they play a 3-5-2, they could have Rudiger, 
Tamori and Zuma all in the back three or maybe even play Cesar Azpilicueta as the right centre back again where he plays so so well even though that's where Deli Alli was constantly getting those headers in when Chelsea played a back three under Conte so maybe not Azpilicueta but still Rhys James could play right wing back which affords him the ability to get right up and put crosses in and maybe from out of the cold just for this game he loves scoring against Tottenham as a left wing back Maybe Marcus Alonso could come back for this game. Marcus, Marcus Alonso scored two at Wembley. Away at Tottenham at the time. Kante, Kovacic and Jorginho could all start in the midfield combining. When Jorginho dropped out, it did look like Chelsea were missing something. And when Kovacic drops out, it looks like Chelsea are missing something. And when Kante's on his game, he's obviously world class. So you could have those midfield free, Tammy Abraham up front and pick your second striker. I even mentioned actually play Mason Mount as a second striker on the sort of left role because he combines so well with Tammy Abraham. I think that's probably actually a good move. I don't think to say just Tammy and Willian would work at all to be honest. But Mason Mount, his one twos of Tammy, they always know exactly where each other are running. That comes with playing with each other for over 10 years. Um, and be a bit more pragmatic, sit back, Jose won't be ready for it, and also have a couple of options on your bench ready to change it back to a 4-3-3 in, in one or two subs. Still, it's going to be exciting to see. I'll do a match review of that game, I'm really looking forward to it, but Chelsea definitely are not favourites. Anyway, what do you guys think? Get down in the comments below, let me know your thoughts on the potential purchase of Isco from Real Madrid, and how do you think the game is going to go against Tottenham Hotspur? Lampard versus Mourinho, <sighs> epic scenes. Shout out for you guys to subscribe to my second channel here on YouTube, Jan Plays. Link in the top of the description. I play video games, I sit on the sofa and talk about football news. Go check it out. Please do support me, subscribe, like, comment, all that luck. Oh yeah, follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. I'm out, ladies and gentlemen. You lot enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chalk. In my life, seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger, like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.